So the Maya trial is a phase three trial that was um, uh, designed to ask the question if daratumumab added to lenalidomide and dexamethasone led to improved outcomes, particularly the improved progression-free survival. Um, this is, um, again, a fairly large study with almost over uh, 700 patients uh, enrolled and randomized in a one-is-to-one -one fashion to either lenalidomide dexamethasone, which was considered the standard or control arm, or daratumumab with lenalidomide dexamethasone, um, which was the experimental arm. Uh, patients uh, could stay on therapy uh, until uh, disease uh, progression. Um, and the primary endpoint uh, was the progression-free survival and additional endpoints uh, included the MRD negativity rate, um, the overall response rate, uh, the overall survival, um, and um, also several other uh, correlative endpoints, including quality of life uh, assessments. So the, the results of Maya study was uh, uh, presented and published um, um, quite, quite some time ago and had demonstrated that there was improved progression-free survival and then updates some uh, last year had also shown that there's improved overall survival uh, in, for the addition of direct to lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Now with the median follow-up of 64 and a half months, um, we see that many of the results that were originally seen have held up. Um, the proportion of patients who have discontinued treatment was significantly lower in the daratumumab lendex arm compared to the lendex arm. With almost 64% um, of the patients in the DRD arm having discontinued therapy compared to 85.2% in the lenalidomide and dexamethasone arm. The, the median progression-free survival was significantly better with daratumumab lendex at 61.9 months compared to 34.4 months with for patients who are on the lenalidomide and dexamethasone um, treatment. The overall survival was also significantly better uh, for the daratumumab lendex compared to lenalidomide and dexamethasone with an overall 35% reduction in the risk of death uh, with the three drug combination. At a five-year uh, time point, 66.7% uh, of the patients with daratumumab lendex were alive compared to 53.7% of the patients who had received um, lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And the, the trial also um, looked at various different subgroups. So the extended uh, follow-up allows us to look at the impact of adding daratumumab in a variety of different subgroups of patients. And all of these were pre-specified as part of the clinical trial design. So when you look at patients who are less than 75 years of age versus who are older than 75 years, again, we see that um, the, uh, the daratumumab uh, addition to lenalidomide dexamethasone led to significantly improved progression-free survival. Now, we see the same thing when, when you look at patients who have good renal function as well as people with some degree of compromise in both scenarios, addition of daratumumab helped. When you look at the risk status of these patients, uh, the benefit of adding daratumumab was seen in ISO stage 1, 2, and 3 patients. And specifically looking at the cytogenetic uh, risk, uh, patients with high-risk disease, again, which constitutes of um, uh, almost 20% um, uh, of the patients in the study, you can see that it also benefited these patients um, uh, as well as it did um, uh, the patients uh, with standard risk disease. In fact, the median progression-free survival for patients with high-risk disease on the daratumumab lendex um, or median overall survival was roughly 55 months compared to 42 months for the patients getting lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And also, when you look at uh, additional subgroups, including those with poor performance status, you see similar degree of benefit across the different subgroups. In fact, there were additional data that was presented uh, at the ASH meeting looking at patient reported outcomes demonstrating a no significant worsening of the quality of life with the addition of daratumumab to lenalidomide and dexamethasone. But in fact, um, the deterioration of possibly associated with relapse was uh, clearly seen much later uh, with the uh, daratumumab lendex. And then finally, we also had some data with respect to MRD negativity, which we know is an important endpoint for patients with multiple myeloma. So while the overall response rate was clearly superior with the addition of daratumumab at 93% response compared to 81.6% for the RD, what was really important was that the MRD negativity 
for the DRD arm was 32.1% compared to 11.1% for those on lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And finally, the study also looked at the proportion of patients where the MRD negativity was sustained for more than a year or a year and a half. And both, both these measurements were significantly better for patients getting the three drug combination. Now, finally, when you look at the outcomes of patients who are MRD negative, um, overall, uh, patients who are MRD negative had a better outcome in terms of overall survival. Uh, and um, it appeared that maybe the patients getting to be MRD negative state with DRD may have had numerically better uh, overall survival as well. With the longer uh, follow-up, we really have not seen any additional toxicity or any new types of toxicity emerge. There was clearly infections that were higher with the Dretumumab Lendex compared to Lenaldomatex Methason with a grade 3 or 4 infection rate of about 43% for DRD compared to 30% for RD. But this also need to take into account the fact that patients remained on therapy with Dara Lendex longer than they did with RD. The most common serious treatment emergent adverse event in both arms were pneumonia, uh, about twice as commonly in the DRD at 19% versus 11% with RD. Overall, the rate of treatment discontinuation due to treatment emergent adverse events was in fact lower in the DRD arm than the RD arm, which probably reflects the fact that there were three drugs in that arm compared to two drugs in the other, giving more opportunity for dose reduction and modifications. So what does this data tell us? Um, the data, the in terms of the progression-free survival that we are seeing with the tumor lenalidomide and dexamethasone of approximately five years um, is some of the was one of the longest that we have seen um, for patients who are considered transplant ineligible. Uh, it almost rivals the progression-free survival that we see in the transplant eligible patient population getting a transplant and lenalidomide maintenance. So. Um, Clearly, uh, the trial tells us that the combination of dratumumab and dexamethasone is a very effective regimen for these older patients with multiple myeloma. Ongoing studies are going to be exploring um, whether we can add yet another drug to that combination or can we take away the dexamethasone uh, from the DRD um, combination to see if we can improve the outcomes further. Mm -hmm.